Amir, I want to go into more detail with the sensory substitution, which sounds fascinating. Can you elaborate on it? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so during this research, what we found is that uh, uh, with the blind, uh, before we started to, to, I started to work on sensory substitution in Boston, uh, is that the brain have a huge capacity to change in blind individuals. And actually there are a, a very interesting case in which a huge part of the brain is uh, being left out without the, the original input it used to process. And uh, what we found uh, in earlier research with uh, blind, in this research that I told you about with object recognition, actually we had a, a, a very uh, strange result which we didn't expect it, is that when they palpate objects, also, when you, when you palpate it, you recognize the objects, right? So and you said the name of the objects. So we just let them, as a control, learn all the names of the objects in the experiment and just retrieve them from memory. And what we found is that the visual cortex is actually changing dramatically. Even the primary visual cortex change to process actually now memory and not vision. So there is a huge capacity for the brain to change. And instead of processing vision in congenitally blind, you know, even in late blind, process memory, and not only this, we found that they have superior memory capabilities because of this extra area of I the see. brain that is dedicated to it. So they, I see, so y if you don't use one part, it can be used for a different function. Exactly. That's so what plasticity means? That's exactly what plasticity means. It right. means the capacity of the brain to change, it's uh, plasticity. And uh, the question is how much can the brain change during uh, early part of the life? But uh, what we found in part of the research with Alvaro Pascoaleone in uh, Harvard Medical School was that even if, if we uh, take a sighted person and we blindfold him for five days and we teach him to read Braille and to walk with a uh, cane, etc., and uh, he, he starts to rely more on his uh, description of the world instead of seeing it, the visual system starts to tune in into memory and to language functions. So there is even in the adult brain capacity, a great capacity for change. So in sensory substitution, we, we thought about maybe using this uh, huge part of the brain, as I said, about a quarter or a third of the brain, which is dedicated to vision, maybe we can help the blind to be more independent. Okay, the pioneer of this field uh, was a guy, an uh, American scientist called uh, Paul Bacharita. And his idea was maybe we can use the other senses to communicate the information into the blind instead of the missing eyes. And that's actually applicable to any uh, form of, vis of uh, blindness and any age of blindness. So it covers the entire spectrum of blindness. And his uh, initial uh, uh, ideas on this were uh, using uh, touch mainly, uh, like stimulating the tongue or the back. And our approach together with uh, Peter Mayer were, was to try to use uh, uh, sounds uh, using the auditory system. So the idea is Even that... Even though auditory works by association and not by uh, the same way okay, as touch. So exactly. So hi here, is the, here, is the, here is the nice twist no. in the story. Usually auditory is being used using association. But using some algorithm, some magic, you can convert the auditory system to being shape system. Okay? I see. And That's this is what you use in sensory substitution. So you, you would have a tiny webcam. Uh, you can put it on, a, on a sunglasses. And this can be connected to a computer. And the computer will take the images. We discard the color information. And uh, there is a grayscale inform transform into grayscale. And then uh, there is some method, some algorithm to convey the shapes in vision into shapes in sounds. So I would just give you a, a one small example. Um, it's a very basic one, but uh, you, just to, to, to get a glimpse of the idea. The idea is not that we get a, a given sound for each uh, visual stimulus, because there is endless, right. there is infinite number of uh, stimuli, but we teach the relationship between the pixels, between the part of the visual field. So just for example, if we have a diagonal line that go from the left side of the picture into the right side, okay? So, for example, you can encode it with uh, low pitch sounds that going into high pitch sounds. So, so something you know like it's a diagonal. Exactly. So it will be something like this. 
do. And now if the diagonal line is going from up to down, it will be something like this. And if it's a horizontal line, it will maintain its pitch. So it's just a language. We can't get into the details with well, such a, learn, a small amount of time. But the idea is that uh, the, 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 this language teaches the blind uh, for several hours or, or days the language to encode from the sounds the original image that was captured by the webcam. Well, let's, you have a two and a half minute uh, video on this and it'll illustrate it for our audience so well. So let's go to that and then come back to our discussion. Sounds like a plan. בדיוק. ספציפית את שומעת את הנעליים שלך. תראי. ואת הצבעת עליהם ממש 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 בדיוק. זה ממש מעולה. את רוצה ללכת להביא אותם לפי השנייה? כן. אבל תקחי בחשבון שזה לוקח קצת זמן, כן? אני מזיזה את המחשב כדי שתהיי ניידת, אבל תעצרי שנייה, תסרקי את העולם, אוקיי? לא, עם המצלמה, כאילו, את יודעת בגדול באיפה זה נמצא, אבל... את צריכה לתת למצלמה זמן להתמקם כדי שהיא תשמיע לך את הצליל. Amir, that was a fascinating little clip. Yeah, yeah, and it's... How uh, does it's, it work in the brain? <clears throat> so, uh, reading or recognizing objects can be achieved by uh, less than uh, 10 or 20 hours of training. And what we were interested in is how the brain is taking the sounds and converting them into visions uh, of reading or, or of, uh, recognizing objects. And here is the uh, really interesting result, I think. Uh, what we found is that initially, uh, when the blind listen to the sounds and they have no meaning, and there is an uh, activity that's going on in the auditory cortex bilaterally. Uh, and this makes sense. And the visual cortex doesn't take much uh, in, uh, is not very interested in these uh, sounds. But after they uh, pass this uh, initial training phase and they now learn to recognize shapes or to read, we actually get activation in the visual areas. So for example, if they look at a bottle and recognize it or a, a door and knows to walk to this door and, uh, and go uh, out of this room, uh, there is a given, the same area that we talked about uh, earlier, this LOTV area that was active for vision and touch, but not for addition, starts to be activated for object recognition using the sound modality. So again, this is uh, an after uh, 30 or 40 hours of training is active for even in congenitally blind for object recognition as strong, almost as strong as when a sighted person is looking at objects. So actually the visual cortex go back to its original uh, mission, but actually it was always his mission. It's just that he didn't know to interpret the information from the sounds. So uh, actually this, uh, if we go back to the original uh, wh where we started, this actually uh, is another integration or very strong proof for the metamodal theory because it says it, this brain area or maybe all brain areas don't really care about the sense which the information is delivered. Like w if we know to understand the language, it doesn't matter if you, we are talking now in Hebrew or in English. It's the meaning that is important. It's, so, it's magical. So, yeah. It really so, is. So, uh, it, it's, it, what you do is you, you effectively invent a new universal language of seeing through sound. And, yes, and, and that's exactly the, the, the goal so the, of the mission. You know, you say somebody's blind as a bat. You say, well, blind as a bat can see. <laughs> exactly. And it doesn't matter if he's a Turkish or Israeli or American mm -hmm. or Canadian. So we have a new language. Let's go to your lab and actually see it. Let's do it. 
Okay, so uh, this is a dad. He is a congenitally blind person, and he's been uh, trained uh, for the last year. Uh, he studied uh, this program. Uh, he's doing it for two hours a week. And uh, right now we are going to show you how he's uh, looking at faces. Long hair. Exactly. This is face of woman. Okay, that's right. Um, what can you hear inside the faces? Can you hear um, mouth, eyes? Uh, the mouth. Okay. Can you try and tell me if this uh, woman is smiling or is she sad? S uh, smiley. Exactly. That's correct. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, what can you tell me about this one? This is short hair. Exactly. This is the uh, face of men. Okay. And uh, the s the he is uh, smiley. Okay. Um, what can you hear? Can you can you hear his eyes? Please tell me when you hear the eyes. Now. Exactly. Okay. And can you hear also the um, the ears? Those nine. Now. Okay, very nice.